Coming up tonight, Hong Kong imposes a two-week ban on scoot flights from Singapore after two passengers tested positive for COVID-19. COVID-19 cases are climbing across Asia with new spikes and surges from India to Japan. And vaccine rollouts hit a snag in Europe and the US on concerns about unusual blood clots linked to two vaccines. This is The Straits Times News Night. I'm Dylan Ang. Good evening, I'm Chao Suen. Budget carrier Scoot will not be flying to Hong Kong for two weeks after Hong Kong authorities imposed a temporary ban on the airline. The reason? Two COVID-19 cases were detected on one of its flights earlier this month. The ban starts from tomorrow to April 29th and it follows that of parent carrier Singapore Airlines, which is currently unable to fly passengers to Hong Kong till April 17th. According to Hong Kong officials, Scoot Flight TR980 flying into the city from Singapore on April 11 had two passengers confirmed to be infected with the COVID-19 virus. Scoot said the two passengers were transfer passengers who had valid negative pre-departure COVID-19 test results, but they tested positive on arrival in Hong Kong. The carrier has apologised to affected passengers who are booked on flights to Hong Kong, saying it will provide rebooking where possible or offer a full refund. For passengers flying from Hong Kong to Changi, Scoot says those flights will not be affected. Showing no signs of slowing, COVID-19 infections are spiralling across Asia. In India, a record 200,000 new cases today, with Mumbai going into a lockdown and New Delhi set to impose a weekend curfew. In Malaysia, new cases topped 2,000 today for the first time since early March, with experts calling on the authorities to ban the annual Hari Raya exodus to hometowns. In Thailand, over 1,500 cases today is the country's fourth daily record high in as many days, with many travelling during the Songkran New Year holidays. And in Japan, more than 4,500 cases today, spiking again with Osaka reporting a record number of infections. Meanwhile, in Tokyo, cases have hit their highest in more than two months. Reasons for the latest surge across the region include the rise of new strains of COVID-19, pandemic fatigue and the slow pace of vaccinations in many countries. Now over in Europe, the continent's already choppy vaccine rollout hits even more turbulence, with concerns rising over risks and complications over the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. In fact, Denmark has become the first country to stop using the vaccine from AstraZeneca altogether over the risk of blood clots, as it said, results of investigations showed real and serious side effects. Johnson & Johnson's single-shot vaccine faces similar concerns over blood clots with European regulators reviewing such cases and US federal health agencies recommending pausing its use for a few days. Now, the pause of the Johnson & Johnson jab in the US has health officials scrambling to reassure the public. Top infectious diseases expert Anthony Fauci spent much of Wednesday doing TV interviews urging Americans to get vaccinated, saying that the pause should not lead to vaccine hesitancy. So as opposed to looking this as a negative safety issue, it could be looked at as a positive issue where they know that when we let a vaccine be available and give it a go-ahead to be put into the arms of the American people, we do it with a considerable degree of confidence as to its safety. And a quick look at the COVID-19 situation here. 16 new cases were confirmed today, all imported. There were no new infections in the community or from migrant workers' dormitories. A man who had organised a streetcar meetup involving more than 150 cars just before the circuit breaker has pleaded guilty to four charges. Following the meetup at East Coast Park, a 31-year-old car dealer Yo Ting Cheng arranged for the convoy to drive to Boon Lei. Some later participated in an illegal street race in Tuas. He's expected to be sentenced on May 25. Once the biggest platform for local designers, multi-label retailer Nice stopped operations late last night after years of payment delays to its vendors. Founder Dennis Tay said that the last few weeks have been the darkest of his life, leaving him no choice but to liquidate the company and file for personal bankruptcy. 
Now, monitoring our water usage will soon be getting smarter. SP Services will install Singapore's first 300,000 smart water meters from early next year as part of the national plan to digitalize the water system. At no cost to customers, these meters that monitor water usage and leaks will be rolled out to homes, commercial and industrial buildings at seven locations. They are the new housing estates of Tampines North and Tenga, as well as Bukit Batok, Aogang, Jurong West, Tampines and Tuas. Now let's take a look at what's been trending on social media today. After making a blockbuster debut last night, Coinbase will start a new trading day today with a huge market cap of 85 billion US dollars, rivaling the likes of Facebook and Airbnb when they went public. The first major crypto company to go public in the US, Coinbase is an app that lets you buy and sell all sorts of digital currencies, including bitcoins. The listing is a ma major milestone for the crypto world, with some calling it crypto's coming out party. But there are no shortage of critics who argue that cryptocurrencies can be wildly volatile and their future is far from certain. And yet another billionaire reaches for the stars. This time, it is the billionaire, world's richest person, Jeff Bezos. His private space company, Blue Origin, has just launched and successfully landed the 15th test flight of its new Shepard rocket booster and capsule. But this flight was a little different than its usual missions because it included a rehearsal component with people standing in for what will eventually be private astronaut customers. While these people disembarked before the rocket actually took off, the capsule is designed to carry as many as six people on a ride past the edge of space, spending as much as 10 minutes in zero gravity before returning to Earth with massive windows to give passengers a view. Now, just how much would you pay for a pair of sneakers? How about one million US dollars? That's how much the first ever Yeezy sneakers won in public by Kanye West are going for. Now, described as one of the most sought-after sneakers in existence, the Nike Yeezy One prototypes were debuted at the 2008 Grammy Awards and will be offered via private sale after it goes on display in Hong Kong for a few days starting tomorrow. Sotheby's did not review an exact asking price, though it said it has valued the item to be in excess of $1 million. If sold at that price, it would far exceed the current auction record of $615,000 for an autographed pair of 1985 Nike Air Jordan 1s worn by Michael Jordan. And in case you're wondering if the Yeezys will fit you, Dylan, they're a size 12. Ooh, might be a bit too big. And now you might soon be able to hike like counts on Facebook and Instagram. Those little red hearts most often spotted under adorable pictures of puppies have been described by many as a source of anxiety, a dangerous way of measuring self-worth. And now Facebook says it's going to test out, again, an option for users to hide those counts to see if it can reduce the pressure of being on social media. Instagram, which Facebook owns, will soon allow a small group of random users to decide whether or not they want to see the number of likes their posts and those of others receive. The social media giant says it's also exploring the feature for Facebook. Are you for or against the hiding of likes? Hmm. I personally think it's for the best. I mean, you can't help getting a little bit nervous after posting a photo because you don't know if people will like it, you know? That's true, you know, I agree. Now, speaking of Instagram, guess who's on Instagram now? Well, we're talking about the <laughs> two of us. If you want, you can give us a follow on Instagram. Our handles are on the screen now. Before we go, Suen, what are your thoughts on spiders? Very intriguing, I love them. Now, then you're going to love this. MIT scientists have successfully turned spider webs into music. And no, I'm not kidding, have a listen. Together with artist Thomas Saracino, the team took two-dimensional scans of a spider web, stitched them together and converted it into a mathematical model that could recreate the web in 3D in virtual reality. They then worked with MIT's music department to create this eerie-sounding track. 
The team believes that this could give us an insight into how spiders communicate and perhaps more interestingly, how they see the world. Fascinating stuff. Very interesting stuff. And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straitstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow.